I'm an artist in residence through Levine Cancer Institute in Concord. I hope I'm finding you and your family safe and well. Okay, now to start, I'm going to give myself a little bit of a guideline to go off of for the shape of this wreath, which we know is circular. So I'm just going to utilize this can of water I was going to use anyway. Now, for purpose of this, I have intentions of this being a bit of a greeting card. I'm going to move my, keep my wreath up a little higher to put some form of a greeting or message there. And I'm just using a pencil lightly going around this can. Again, just like if you were to create a wreath, you need some type of form in order to work off of. Now, that form is going to be where my acrylic paint follows and then for this step I'll be using just a um, general flat brush and I'm using like a heavier body paint so tempera would work fine um, I would prefer acrylic I would not use oil in this case um, especially with working on a paper product like so so you could either have a green already existing that you just pour right out of the tube I would like to make my own so I'm gonna do a yellow and a teeny bit of blue and I could always make adjustments of that if I need a little darker then, I a little bit more blue. If I want to make it a little more rich, a little more hunter green, I'm going to add a bit of red. Sounds crazy, but bear with me. You're going to see how much darker that's going to make that without using, utilizing a black. Now, I'm not going to rinse off that brush. I want to keep this brush fairly dry aside from just the wetness of the paint. I might kind of pull off some of the ends of it. And now I'm literally forming all the way around here in this kind of stipple technique in which I'm just pushing straight down. And this is giving me my um, texture, if you will. Now at first, it's going to seem a little like, hmm, I don't know. This just doesn't look like it's filling out like I'd expect a wreath. What you'll notice is you're going to experience what it's like when you get less paint and you might say, oh, I like that texture a little better. So you'll notice on that first pass around, there's my little wreath, I left a little bit more space between it. I can always add more. I cannot take it away. So if I want to alter that green at all for this next layer, I could. I could add in a little bit darker. But I do kind of like the um, more dry brush, if you will. But now my goal is just to fill it out and you'll see me maybe come inside and outside of that circle a little bit more. I want my wreath to have some just great texture and be nice and full. But it's really important that your edges on the inside and the outside have a little bit of fray. So as I continue to pass around, you'll notice I'm just working kind of with what paint I already have. Not so much adding anymore. Can you hear that kind of dabbing sound? And that's where you're gonna get those really nice light greens. Now, I am working on a brown paper. I just love the appearance of these kind of more rustic-like things. This could even be on a grocery bag. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So I'm going to let that dry up a little bit. I no longer need this. And the reason um, to go back to the brown bag or just the brown card is because I do want to put some snowy looks on it. If I were dealing with a white paper, obviously I wouldn't have that luxury. So there's two fold for this. I'm going to utilize the white to place in where I will later put in my red berries. And that way it's going to kind of put a white base behind it and give it a little extra pop so that when I lay the red on top, it could be a little brighter. This is not necessary. I can kind of show you the difference. I'll do some with and some without. Um, you'll notice I'm just using the back end of a paintbrush. And I like to just put some clusters here and there, but I also am just gonna dot around what will be the snow. And it's just one more layer of texture. And the texture of using the back end of a brush, as you'll notice, is really fun in that it just adds um, literally a raised surface and has a different grab to it than, say, um, using the end with bristles. But you can use whatever you'd like. I'm gonna scatter it and make it, make it as whimsical as possible. Another fun way would be if you wanted to do a paint splatter, then you'll definitely want something around behind it. And in this case, my acrylic's really thick. I'd have to add a little bit of liquid to that, just plain water, and utilize something with more bristles. It kind of just run your fingers through like you would a, um, like you would a toothbrush. All right. 
leaving this space open down here. I'm going to place in my red berries. And I, here's an example. If I place it on top of the white, I just want you to see how much brighter that red gets. So if you do like the idea of these really, really, really bright red berries, easier if you either just let the white dry or lay it on top and don't mingle with that white too much. But just to give you an example, then there's some without. So it's not a huge difference. I like to just put little clusters here and there. Again, let the surface be raised without mushing them too much light-handed. Now, depending on your season, depending on your celebration, you could easily put some form of bow on it. I think the primitive is fine. The tie and beauty to the wreath, I think we all need a little bit of a wreath symbolism in our life as it symbolizes unity and strength as it's a never-ending circle. And so again, no matter your occasion, I hope this adds just a little bit of feeling of love and warmth and unity there. Now once that dries, if I wanted to put a message on it, because again, I'm sending it somewhere, I could just do that there at the bottom. I'm using a gel pen. whatever you want or just let the wreath be as it is. Enjoy creating my friends.